Well, he was sworn in in December of 2020, promising bold reform. And today we're going to check in on how things are going. I'm delighted to be joined by District Attorney George Gascon. Hello, nice Maria. to have you here. Maria, so good to see you. Because the pursuit of justice must be timeless. And that is why we will work to correct the injustices of the past. You just put out a midterm report for this year and you outlined several key areas and outcomes. What do you consider to be the highlights of that report? I think the highlights of the report is we're seeing crime beginning to go back down to pre-pandemic periods. So it's very rewarding for me to, to affirm the fact that we said from the very beginning that you know public safety and reform actually travel together and they can be complementary to one another. You know, during the time when I uh, was sworn in, we were in the middle of the pandemic and nationally, we saw a, a, an increase in crime and unfortunately it coincided with my being sworn in and the implementation of a lot of this reform and now seeing crime going back to pre-pandemic period. I think it's in incredibly rewarding for me and, and it's an affirmation that we're on the right path. Handling cases that should not go to jail slash prison, um, especially when it comes to addiction or self-imposed harm. How are the opportunities presenting themselves for alternate therapy, for alternate help? Yeah. How is that policy and process? Are there alternates being put in place for the amount of people that need that help? We're working very closely with all the stakeholders, including law enforcement as well as community-based organizations and our board of supervisors to increase the capacity to provide for the intervention uh, that is appropriate for people that have mental health issues, substance dependence, a combination of two. Uh, we continue to be challenged, of course, with the, the not sufficient resources, right? Uh, so much of what we deal with uh, is impacted by mental health. You know, if you talk to anyone, would tell you that easily at least 40% of the people that are in county jail every day have some level of mental health problems, some of them very acute. And often our prosecutors are faced with really uh, poor options, right? We have somebody that cannot be released on the street because they may be dangerous at that moment or they have other issues. Um, we recognize that they have a mental health problem. The best place for them would be a treatment facility that has, you know, uh, a, that is a secure facility, but we don't have ability for that sometimes, and then we end up sending the person to jail. It compounds the problem, though, because not only is the jail not the place to deal with this problem, but then we also are facing a jail overcrowding problem, right? So the sheriff, on the other hand, is facing the reality that he has to release people, sometimes even if he may not want to because we're over capacity every single day. So it becomes a very delicate dance. All right, well, thank you so much for taking this precious time. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you back. Maria, my pleasure. Look forward to next year. <laughs> thank you. Take care.